Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you because of the name of Jesus, the name above every other name, the name that has been exalted, the name that has been lifted up on high for us. Father, we pray as we look at your word based on that name today, we will become partakers of the authority in that name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Once again, let's be seated. God bless you. Once again, I welcome everyone to the house of God. It's been quite some time. I've not been in the church physically. And nice to see all the lovely faces again. Amen. Amen. I hope you like to see my face after such a break. I wasn't on vacation, as you were told. Uh, you know, we had this congress, and it was wonderful. And, and, and I'm sure you enjoyed it last Sunday when we had the celebration together, uh, bringing all the church family together from all over the world, uh, physically and virtually. Uh, it was a wonderful time. And um, uh, I pray that after 50 years, the generation that will continue for the next 50 years will witness more and uh, even greater glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we are looking at the word of God on walking and working with spiritual authority. Now, when you talk about authority, you are talking about the, uh, the right or power to give orders, to make decisions, and to enforce obedience. Uh, it is the power or the right to direct or control someone or something. And so when you're talking about authority, authority is to do something, to get something done. Uh, and generally, it means that uh, when you are given direction, you are given instruction, you are given a command, uh, there is another, there is a power backing up. Uh, take, for example, you go to the street, uh, and the policeman in that uniform, he says, uh, I, I want to search you. Well, if he were there without any uniform or without any identity card, uh, and just he could resist. Uh, and the person might not be as strong as you are. The person might not be as tall as you are. But because of that authority, that identity, that uniform, there is a power back in the individual to ensure that you listen. And that is the power of the government. So there is power. And then he comes to exercise authority because there is sufficient power backing him up. Now, when you're going on the road, maybe the traffic lights are not working, and somebody stands there, might just be a tiny person, and he raises the hand like this, what do you do? You stop. And that is authority because if it is power, you understand you are driving and he is standing there. If you are going to use power, who has more power? <laughs> you know, you, you, you can crush that individual. And then they call that rebellion. And when that happens and you disobey authority, then power comes into play. They can send, you know, reinforcement, uh, and they'll say, go and crush that rebellion. And in some cases, we even said military force, and said, there is some, somebody resisting authority there, let us use power now. But authority basically is a symbol that there is a higher power behind you. And when you are a believer, you are a child of God, he puts his authority in his own people by virtue of their relationship with him, and their service in his kingdom, you know. Uh, that authority that we use is in the name of Jesus because he says all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. So we, we represent God. We want to do the purpose of God. And based on that, we are given authority. So authority is derived from the name of Jesus. And if somebody now wants to resist our authority, what do you do? Uh, you call for reinforcement, um, and you are going to pray, amen, amen. hallelujah. 
So when you raise your hand and the person says, I'm still going up, you call for reinforcement from heaven. And our prayers will be answered in Jesus' name. To enjoy your Christian liberty and fulfill your ministry, you must realize this authority and learn to walk in it and work with it. Remember what we are talking about is walking in and working with spiritual authority. Two points we are looking at. Number one, walking in the authority of a son. That, that's the first thing. Because you belong, and after that we'll look at working with the authority of a steward. Now, th 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 those are two things that you should understand as a, as a believer. Uh, so there is no, you don't need any panic. Uh, generally, maybe a policeman comes inside here. Uh, he doesn't even need to carry a gun. <laughs> he just says, okay, uh, I've been in the name of the king or in the name of the government. Uh, and I have to do this. Oh, okay, go ahead. You have the power of the nation behind you. He doesn't need to be shaking all around the place and be shouting, no. The authority is to realize who you are and what you are doing. That's why two points, the authority, uh, you walk in the authority of a son, and secondly, you work, uh, you act with the authority of a steward. Number one, walking in the authority of a son, you know, spiritual authority is hierarchical. Eh? On, on the lowest level, you have human. All human beings, whether young or old, they are subject to spiritual power. On top of the human level, you have the demonic or the devilish level eh, in their hierarchies. You know, it's always a band. You know, human beings, you know, also it's a band. Eh? You have the law, you have the servant, you have the king, but it's a band, but it's still human. Demonic is also a band. Eh? You have uh, common little, little demons, you have principalities, you have powers. It's all... And on top of that, you have the divine. And Jesus Christ says, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. So that's why um, when we come and we say spiritual authority, it, it, it has something to do with the divine. Because if you are at that topmost level, it means that you are above every other one below you. Uh, and it is the authority of a son. You know, when somebody is a prince, the prince has the authority of the king, his father. And that's why the father can say, they will reverence my son. You see that in Matthew chapter 21, verse 37. They will reverence my son. It's logical to assume that. And similarly, child of God, you know, you have authority bestowed on you, given to you by your father. And the authority you have is to do three things. Number one, you can ask anything in the name of that Jesus who has the authority. You can ask the Father, and you are going to receive whatever you act. Number two, you can also exercise authority over uh, spiritual forces in the name of that Father, in the name of that Son. Amen. And number three, you can resist their Father, the devil. And what will he do? What will he do? He will, flee. he will flee. He will not just run gently, he will flee. You know why you are fleeing? You understand now? And maybe they say something is happening outside there. I know as we are, as we are all quiet here, uh, Sister Fumi will be telling us that she doesn't run marathon. Uh, but if a lion will appear here, she will be the first one to be a little. <laughs> Amen. Now, it is, the, the devil will run from us when we resist him in Jesus' name. And remember, as I told you, you don't need to to panic. All you need to do is to know who you are, and based on that, you have that authority. So it's not because you are tall or you are high or you have been in the church for a long time. Mm -mm. Every prince, every princess is a child of the king. Amen. And you have authority. Let's open to John chapter 14. You know, I mentioned three things asking from the Lord in the name, and you are going to receive. John chapter 14. From verses 13 and 14. John 14, verses 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, what will happen? 
I will do it. You see that in my name, in my name. In other words, when we pray, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, oh, that's okay. That's the authority. It's just like, uh, you know, when, when I get to, uh, maybe uh, you are working in a particular place, you get to the magazine, and then you have the, uh, the request, and your boss has signed it, your group manager has signed it, and you get to the magazine, and you say, I need this, 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 this. You just look at it, and then there is a signature. But, oh, yes. I mean, it's, it's not that you are going to use it for yourself or something like that. It's just to tell you that there is an authority. Um, it seems the battery is gone. Is the battery still working? Okay, you can hear me. So, um, so there, is a, there is an authority, and then you get the goods that you want because you belong to that organization and you have the authority of the person who assigned that thing. Uh, that, that, that's what you are going to. Well, let's read also from Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. This should be very familiar to you. Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. The Bible says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. The next three words, please. In my name. Do you see the consistency there? In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, there was a woman who, who just got converted in our church at that time. Uh, she, she just con got converted and she realized the, the, the authority in the name of Jesus. And she, the woman was so bold. You know, so, uh, people who have been converted for uh, some time, they might not be as bold as people who are just converted. You understand? Uh, uh, because sometimes aging... <laughs> and, and the woman... There was a madman coming. Uh, 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 Sister Bola, uh, when the madman is coming with a machete, what do you do? No, you, you approach the individual. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, and the, the, the woman just said, give me your machet. And just approach this. And, and the madman just delivered the machet to him. She didn't fear at all in the name of Jesus. Uh, you don't go in the name of uh, any other, you know, in the name of Jesus. Because she realized the power in the name, and so use that authority. So, so you will cast out devils. You are not going to be afraid. Another young convert. I mean, this one, the, the, the one I was, I mean, I was talking to you about it, an elderly woman. Uh, this one was a young uh, convert, young lady. And then she was praying and then casting out devil. And, uh, and then the devil said, you have not fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And the girl said, in the name of Jesus, Jesus has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Come out. <laughs> and she cast out the devil. <laughs> you understand? You see, it's not so much of what you have done or what you can do, but what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Now, do you begin to see the picture now? That is authority, yeah, using the authority in the name. And then that's why Jesus Christ said, when you use his name, and your prayer is answered that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That brings glory to the name of Jesus. But if you come there like mighty eagle, or, you know, like, uh, what's the other name? Goliath. And say, yes. To whom goes the glory? So of course, to yourself. But when you come in the name of the Lord Jesus, and the sin is done, then the Father, God the Father, is glorified in his Son because that name it's a glorious name. The Lord will be glorified in us in Jesus' name. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Uh, so it means you need to know that you are a new creature in Christ, and then you can walk without fear. If any man be in Christ, what happens? He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All fears should go away because you are now a child of God. And Jesus Christ says, Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head, they are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. That you see in Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7. So you see here that as a child of God, you can exercise authority. Now, the question is, uh, what are the conditions? Of course, let's just summarize. Uh, uh, number one, um, number one uh, salvation from sin. That's what makes you a child of God. 
Let's read from Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's open our Bibles, uh, please. Amen. Amen. As you are reading the Word of God, and you know the Word of God is power. It's not just powerful, it's power. So that Word of God, when it mixes with faith in your heart, it makes you strong. So that's the reason why you read the Word of God, you meditate upon it. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. Uh, Brother Neil, when did you come back? This month, so you were here last Sunday. Yeah. Oh, and I was not here. Ah, sorry, I missed uh, your, uh, what do we call that now? Your return. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But we are together now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But what happens? Let's read the remaining together, brethren. But, but Amen. You know, they, 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 what makes people afraid many times is because the devil is accusing you. Oh, look at what you did. <laughs> look at that one you did. But Jesus Christ said, the prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing in me. So the righteous are as bold as a lion. And you can be righteous eh? because as many as received him, to give them give the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, uh, who are born, not of the will of man or the will of uh, the flesh, but of God. Praise the Lord. So everybody can become righteous who says, Lord Jesus, come into my life and cleanse me from sin. That is what makes us righteous. And we will be righteous in Jesus' name. The righteous are as bold as a lion. That's what gives you the, the, you know, the authority, and then you can say, hey, Satan, you cannot do this. And uh, when you exercise that authority, Satan has no option. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two, separation from sinners. Uh, so yes, you are a child of God, but if you keep on mingling with the people who can pollute you, your authority, in fact, when the judgment of the sinner is coming, it can spill over onto you. And that happened to Jehoshaphat. Uh, so Make sure, yes, we, we should evangelize. Definitely we should evangelize. But you are not the one that is, you know, you are working in the counsel of the ungodly eh, or standing in the way of sinners or sitting in the seat of the scornful. No, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. Uh, God, God doesn't want us to do that. You, you know, he said, come out from among them and be separate. When you come out, then you become, uh, uh, you know, formidable in the hand of God. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, and this is very important. Maybe you are living uh, and your spouse is not born again. You say, how can I do that? No, there is no problem with that. When you are married, you are married to the person and you know how the scriptures, you know, uh, should relate in your, in your, in your relationship with, with your spouse. But it doesn't mean that uh, you begin to do the, the evil thing that he or she is doing. No, you separate yourself. We are still married to the individual. You still honor the person. You respect him or her because you are joined together in marriage, but you do not continue in the evil that the individual might be doing. Um, Hebrews chapter 1. Which verse, my brethren? Verse 9. Let's read it together. One, two, go. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. This is referring to Jesus and by extension to us. Uh, if, you, if you love righteousness and you hate iniquity, anointing comes. And when anointing comes, of course, you know, there is power, there is authority. And number three, supplication in the spirit. Supplication in the spirit. Eh? You pray in the spirit. Uh, Jude 1, verses 20 and 21 tell us, uh, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Uh, can you please turn this one on for me? Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of God unto eternal life. Praise the Lord. Now, so you see here that we are talking about the, um, the child of God, somebody who knows what he has as a child of God. You know your position. Uh, you know the authority that comes on top of that position because you are a member of the kingdom of God. Now, that is one level, and it's a good level already. We call that the entry level. Amen. 
You know, when you get into a, a, a job, there are some entry-level jobs. And you get there, so this is an entry-level. You are an employee in that company. Uh, if they have a uniform, you still put on your uniform. But you know you are a starter. Amen. But then you can also go to you know, the advanced level, the executive level. Uh, and we are now coming to the executive level. Everybody say executive level. God is promoting us in Jesus' name. And that's the second one, working with the authority of a steward. Now, if somebody is a steward, a steward doesn't necessarily have to be a son, but here, you, here is the thing. Eh? A, a steward is here, and a son is here. The son is a baby, and the steward is an adult. Of course, in time, the son will have more privileges than the steward, but... For now, the steward has authority. The steward is the one to go and choose the wife for that, <laughs> for, for that son. The steward is the one that... Uh, let's look at that in the life of uh, Abraham. Uh, in um, Genesis chapter 24, verse 5. Genesis chapter 24, verse 5. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. Now, where I'm going is this. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. Now, that's a steward. All the goods. I'm sure Abraham couldn't give all the goods into the hand of a baby because he couldn't handle it. In time, he will be able to do that, but a steward. And the same way Jesus Christ said, as my father has sent me, even so sent I you, steward. Now, I know you are very smart people. We have dealt with point number one. We have dealt with number, point number two. What makes us unique in terms of, um, are we sons or stewards? <laughs> Amen. That's what makes us unique. So if you want to play on Sunday, oh, you are not, hey, I'm a son or a daughter. Or you want to play, you are not a steward. We are both children, sons and daughters. And stewards, that's what makes our position unique, great. And this is what you see, because Jesus Christ said, as children of God now, in the house of God, we can exercise the authority of the Son, but we go beyond that. There is executive authority, authority to get things done in the household of God. You know, a steward has authority to use his master's goods for his master's purpose. In the same way, those who enlist in divine service have authority to use divine services, resources, the resources of God. You can use them. In fact, God says, you know, we are stewards of God, of the mysteries of God. Now, and the devil recognizes those who have that authority. Amen. I, I will read a place um, in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, we read from verse 17. To verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 to 19. The Bible says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through what? Through thy name. Through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. And the devil knows. And the devil has that information. Amen. Uh, do you know the devil reads the Bible also? He knows the information that you have. So you should be not be more ignorant than the devil. You should be more knowledgeable than the devil. Let's put it that way. How do I know that the devil reads the Bible? He went to Jesus Christ. A fall down because it is written. He will give his angels. Uh, you remember that passage? So it's from the Bible. Uh, so it's important for you to know that the devil understands here when he says that nothing shall by any means hurt you. You can tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Satan knows that. And you should not be ignorant. And there are some people who, who, who wanted to, to, to do some, uh, they call it hanky-panky, uh, uh, casting out the devil. Let, let, let's look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. 
you will see that the devil recognizes that. He knows the name of Jesus upon you. He knows who you are. He knows where you are from. He knows when you are from heaven. He knows when you are from the earth. He knows whether you have divine protection or you don't have divine protection. Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. I read from verses 14 and 15. And there was seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And that he knows Jesus, of course, <laughs> we, 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 we have seen that one before. I say, I, I know Paul also, uh-huh. So we can say, uh, uh, Jesus I know, uh, Debor I know, uh, Jesus I know, Joy I know. You see, this is the same thing by the grace of God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new because Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so the reason they knew, uh, they knew Paul was because Jesus Christ was living in him. And if Jesus is in you, then you are lifted up and you are uplifted in Jesus' name. Beyond every limitation, but also beyond every limit in the high, on, the, on the sky. That is what gives you authority. Now, the key question is, how can you exercise this level of authority? Remember, we have dealt with sonship authority. You can walk in that every day, everywhere. When you wake up in the morning, you pray, and you are going on the street. Nobody can molest you. If they want to molest in the name of Jesus. You just, you just raise up the hand. You know, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Go in that authority. If anything harasses you in the night, in the dream, my brother, my sister, don't be afraid. Just say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That name will deliver you. Even if there is nobody there and that name, you just take that name of Jesus with you, it will deliver you. Beyond that, go to this executive level. And that is what many of us are missing. We just say, okay, I'm a child of God. I'm in the number. And then you are rejoicing. Get promoted. Get lifted up. So three things you need to do. Number one, consecrate to service. Because this opens something higher for you. In Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 1. You just consecrate yourself, Lord, I, I, I want to serve. It, it's not enough for me to just come to church by the grace of God. I am, I'm, I've been consistent, but I, I want to serve. I want to serve. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You will see that these people, because they had something to do, that's why we call it executive authority. Yeah? Because you have something to do. And there is no way you are going to experience this if you don't go out for service. If you don't go out to, you know, to witness to somebody else, to challenge other people. When there are people, they will say, well, there is a crusade coming. And then they will go and they will pray with somebody. They say, just come. I don't want to come. I don't have time. Come, come. And they will stay there. They will pray. Haven't you been listening to testimonies? I didn't want to come. But the man kept on, you know, the woman kept on. And you bring other people. And when you see that, you are working with Jesus. You are working for Jesus. And as you are doing that, personally in your life, the Lord will be encouraging you, will be giving you strength. As you step forward, remember there are some things, those of us that preach, it's not all the time that you, you, you feel you can do it. If you do only the things that you feel you can do, you will not do much. But maybe there is an assignment. I say, God, I'm, how am I going to go about this? And then you are pacing up and now, oh, Lord, help me, oh, Lord, help me. God knows. And that's what gives glory to him. Because you're not going to do it in your own strength, in your own power. And then he will come there and aid you. And you will see that you are growing. You will be growing as you give yourself to the service of the Lord. That's important. Number two, commit yourself to the scriptures. You commit to scriptures. Remember, when we talk about authority, authority is in the name of Jesus. And how do we learn about the name of Jesus? How do we learn about this authority? By reading the scriptures. You meditate on the scriptures. In John chapter 15, John chapter 15, I read from verses 4 and 7. John 15, verses 4 and 7. The Bible says, abide in me and I in you. 
As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Look at verse 7. If ye abide in me, and what? And my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Look at that. The word of God will abide in you. And when you eat that word of God, do you know that we become what we eat? Has it ever occurred to you that what you have physically today is what you have been eating? <laughs> Amen. Uh, you, you, you didn't see that. All the bread, all the, the thing, and if you have been eating chewing gum, and, you know, it will become like that. So whatever you want to become, eat. And the Bible now says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. So you, you, as you are reading that word of God, you will be like that. And if all you are reading is enemy of my soul, how, what are you going to become? You become like that. You will become, you will become enemy. And if you, are, if you become like enemy, how do we call that in biology? In a medical something. Something that looks like enemy. Enemy. You understand? You become anemic. <laughs> Amen. If you are always watching enemy of my soul, you become anemic. Because you will be afraid of witches, afraid of wizards. And it, when you are reading the word of God and you are reading the truth, you know, you become bold. You become strong because that word of God will keep you strong. And if you are not reading the word of God, you only think that there are some people always on their telephone, always on their... Hey, hey, sister, have you seen this WhatsApp message? That, that WhatsApp message? They say, wait. <laughs> if you WhatsApp this, you, are, you just be like Wasabi. <laughs> you understand? I think I'm creating my own, uh, <laughs> my own association today. You see, read the word of God. Meditate therein. Let it dwell in your heart. And then you will be bold in Jesus' name. So you commit yourself to the scriptures. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. That is the condition. And lastly, covet the spirit. Covet the spirit. Covet the spirit. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. That you read from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. The disciples, they were saying, uh, are you coming at this time? Jesus Christ, said, shut up. Focus. Don't let people deceive you. There are so many things that people will be talking about. You focus. I want to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And those disciples, what they did, they, they were praying. So when it is time for prayer meeting, don't be far away. There are some people who never come on Friday when we are praying. I say, well, I don't have the time. When it is nine weeks, you say, hey, maybe there is time for prayer and fasting. They say, but I will be hungry. Of course. But you receive power. Amen. Let's, let's read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. The Bible says, but covet honestly. The best gifts. You know, number one level is to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Eh? And that is the gateway into spiritual gifts. And you now begin to convert spiritual gifts. Because you are increasing in the hierarchy of spiritual authority that way. And remember, all these things are for us. Let's summarize. You see, authority is the power to give orders, to give commands, to control, and to let situations submit to you. And the authority that we have as children of God is derived from the name of Jesus Christ. In that name, we do all that God wants us to do. And we have looked at two types of uh, authority. The sonship authority, authority that you can walk in as a, as a son in the, in the house of God. And the executive authority, that is authority that you have as a steward in the house of God. And both levels of authority, they are for us, even today. How I pray that. As you have heard, you'll be able to press on in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray together. And, you know, I'm going to tell the Lord, Lord, I, I just, I open myself unto this. I want to, I want you to help me. I want you to help me. We'll spend a few minutes to pray, praying first on the sonship authority, and then we are going to pray on this authority of the steward.